Hello again everyone, this is Rudolph Wilkins with Forgotten Fitness and today I will be demonstrating Vince Gironda's Seated Wrist Curl, which I regard as a true underrated classic. Now if you know anything about Larry Scott or Vince Gironda, they were big into doing all sorts of different special and unique curl variations and I would regard this as one of those. Now, Larry Scott and Vince Gironda also both had their own independent versions of the seated wrist curl. Now, of course, in this depiction here, you can see Larry Scott doing a wrist curl variation, but he's actually doing Vince Gironda's variation. Larry Scott did his seated wrist curl on actually a very small bench that was about eight inches high, and it was a little bit different. If I ever do end up acquiring one of those small benches. I will definitely make a video on Larry Scott's variation, but currently I don't have one, and it would be doing an injustice to call this Larry Scott's seated wrist curl because it's certainly not. He also had a couple different things he would do with his with his fingers as far as the going down portion that Vince Gironda actually didn't like, which I'll mention of course in this video. Now if anybody if any of you know me, uh, I'm a big proponent of actually doing wrist rolling to build up strong forearms and wrists. Ever since I was an athlete in high school playing football, powerlifting, or wrestling, I was a big proponent of the wrist roller. I did it almost every day, and it really gave me a strong vice-like grip. But over the last month or so, I've been giving seated wrist curl variations a try, and I have really found myself enjoying them quite a lot. And so I figured I might as well share my experiences with uh, this exercise to all of you. So in this video, of course, I will explain this exercise and why you may want to perform it. I will demonstrate it for you, and I will show you a uh, video about how to perform it correctly. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about this video, do leave them in the comment section below. And of course, if you have any future video ideas, leave them down there as well, and I will add them to my list. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Vince Gironda, you may be asking, what is the seated wrist curl and why would I ever want to perform it? Well, as mentioned in the previous slide, this can actually be found in Vince Gironda's book, Unleashing the Wild Physique, on page 55. Now, he had a couple different variations of this, uh, depending on the piece of literature you're reading, if it's a, late, a later piece of literature or Unleashing the Wild Physique, which is a fairly early uh, uh, publication by Vince Gironda. So, it really depends where you look, but this particular variation is the one from Unleashing the Wild Physique, so I just wanted to make that clear, because there are a number of different variations. It was used extensively by some of Gironda's best students, including Don Howarth, Steve Davis, and Larry Scott. If you actually look um, up this exercise, you can find numerous different pictures online, or if you read different uh, publications or pieces of lit literature, you can see uh, different depictions as well. To actually perform this exercise, you want to begin by placing your forearms along a standard flat bench with your elbows pinched against your thighs. So if you're looking at this depiction up here, you can kind of see how his elbows are pinched. And you should actually be hunched over and have your back slightly rounded here. You will then grasp a barbell with your hands free beyond the bench and your palms facing upwards. Ideally, your hands should be about 10 inches apart, but that, of course, depends on the width of the bench. Mine are pretty close to that, but my bench is kind of narrow, so they might be a little bit closer than that. A tip here is you want to keep your thumbs on the same side as your palms, and this will really help work the, for the front side of your forearms a lot more. Your thumbs won't actually be assisting you that much. You'll really be able to use the flexors in your wrist. Now you will raise and lower your hands as much as possible, but here's the kicker, okay? In this particular variation, you do not let the bar roll all the way down to the fingertips. Now, if you know anything about Larry Scott, he preached the fingertip roll. So did guys like Dave Draper. They really enjoyed getting that full flexion of the fingers. But in Vince Gironda's mind, and this is a direct quote, he mentions that this works the wrist, not the forearms. So I'm not really going to speak on that because, of course, this is Vince Gironda's book and his exercise. So you can take that as you wish. But I did notice in doing both different variations that you do feel this a lot more in the muscles than if you bring it all the way down to the fingers, which 
you really feel that in the in the carpels and your in your fingers themselves but here it's a lot more focused and driven directly on the forearms themselves so I'm sure that's what Vince Gironda meant by this and I do think there's a difference to work the lower forearms uh, this is a different exercise but to work the lower forearms you want to actually place a six to eight inch block underneath the back of the bench to elevate it and create this ideal angle so on the legs of the bench that are actually further away from you you'll place this block and of course it will elevate and tip the bench and this will give you a little bit of a different angle to work the lower forearms again Vince Gironda was big on uh, multiple angles so hitting a muscle group from different angles to enhance certain parts and um, so this is another one of those in the next slide I will actually demonstrate this for you and here I am performing Vince Gironda's seated wrist curl and what was interesting that I noticed immediately was you actually want to get that full extension you you desire to roll this bar down to the fingers it's just a natural want when you bring that bar down to actually extend the fingers so in not doing that it actually made this exercise more difficult than if you were to roll it down to the fingers now because you're not rolling it down to the fingers you can definitely overload the forearms a lot more and do more weight I mean Larry Scott could do up to 135 pounds fairly easily with this exercise which is unbelievable it's literally a ridiculous number to think about and he'd do that for 12 reps and barely be sweating but um, if you're a mere mortal like me you, you know you definitely struggle with that kind of weight but as you can see I am hunched over and my elbows are pinched against my thighs and I'm just curling this up and I'm making sure to not extend beyond the fingertips and it felt very good having my thumbs on the same side I was able to get a good stretch and bring that bar all the way down and all the way back up but beyond that there's really not too much to say it's a pretty basic exercise but a a good one and I notice in the gym you don't really see anybody working their forearms at all now I am definitely against that I think you if you're bodybuilding in particular you definitely want thick meaty forearms to help accentuate a front double bicep shot or really anything I think you need good forearms so but I was just never a big fan of wrist curls but I'm slowly changing my 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 methodology my ideologies in that regard I have found these quite enjoyable and I think I will be adding these to my routine regularly from now on I have inc been incorporating them over the last month but I think they might be here to stay for me so I hope you all enjoyed that video and learned a little bit uh, about this exercise if you didn't already know about it and until next time this is Forgotten Fitness signing out bye bye